Hi guys, welcome back to another GGA video review. Today we'll be checking out the brand new mouse from Cougar. It's the Cougar 700M gaming mouse. I've been really excited to check out this mouse. It's a high-end mouse from Cougar. Now if you're not familiar with Cougar, uh, Cougar has been around for a while. They started off doing power supplies. They do really high quality power supplies at an affordable price. They've now moved into doing cases um, recently and now they're starting to do uh, gaming peripherals. So, I think they've done a previous mouse before, the, the 2 or the 300M, but this is their first high-end gaming mouse, and they're also bringing out a keyboard as well, the 700K, and that's going to be sort of in line with this mouse as well, So, and the software does interact with both the keyboard and mouse, so uh, that is a good idea. So some of the main features of this mouse, um, you're probably thinking um, a new company into using uh, making mice, they're probably going to skip out on some features, uh, use cheaper parts. Um, but I can tell you now, I've already checked out this mouse, it uses the highest quality parts all around. Uh, it uses an Avago ADNS 9800 uh, laser sensor, which runs up to 8200 DPI, and it uses Omron switches, which are rated up to uh, 20 million clicks. So that is the same as such mice as the uh, CM Storm Reaper, it uses that same, uh, same sensor, and same as the Corsair M65 uses the same sensor. So really good sensor. It also has a 32-bit ARM, uh, processor in it which which is rated up to five well sorry which has up to 512 kilobytes of memory which is quite a bit step up from your other mice most mice running the sensor will only have about 128k so this has slightly larger memory for saving profiles and things like that so you have in the avago sensor it has your standard uh standard 150 inches per second uh, 30 g's of acceleration and your thousand hertz polling rate so that's great to see all those. It also has weights uh, which can be taken out which are on the top. So it's good to see in a high-end mouse they've added weights which you can take out. I think that's important for mice these days. It also has an RGB light in the uh, front which you can change to any color you want. So it just runs off a color wheel uh, which is great they've added that. And the overall mouse on its own is 130 grams. So just some more things about the sort of structural, structural design of the mouse and the buttons has an aluminium body, so the whole body is an al aluminium design. It feels really sturdy on the desk. Uh, it has an adjustable palm rest, uh, which is really nice. You can just turn this uh, little knob at the back so you can lower it and raise it so it'll fit all types of hands. It has a sports mode where you can actually take the, uh, take the palm rest off and swap it with a more sporty mode sort of palm rest. I'm not sure how they got sports mode out of it, but it's just a good idea that you can actually swap the palm rest for uh, different size palms. It has an aim button, which is on the thumb sort of rest, which I like. It's always handy having a button there for aiming. And it has a fire button as well, which is next to the, uh, the left click uh, button, which can be programmed to anything you like as well. Um, other than that, we'll jump in. It's got a 1.8 meter braided cable, and it is gold plated as, as, as well. So that's pretty much it on the main specs. We'll jump in, see what's in the box, and see what the mouse looks like. All right, so I've already gone over the features. I won't go over that anymore. I will just have a quick look at the box. I really do like this box. I've had the mouse out before, as I said earlier, so it's not actually sort of secured in, so it will sort of slide around, but it does come centered in the middle under this sort of uh, plastic cover. Um, as you saw before, it's got all the specs on each side and then the specs on the back as well, like that, and it just has a um, sticker over there. So when you're actually pulling it apart, you just pull each end out, which is really nice take this cover off like just so and then it's actually meant to uh, leave this uh, bottom bit still here if it wants to come out so they do make it a tight fit All right, finally, okay, so, and then you just take this cover off, like so, and now we have the mouse, I'll just slide this out. So a really nice, neat, small little box. Um, they have gone to the effort to do a nice box, which I do always like. Um, you also get this little uh, booklet in there as well. I have taken two weights out, there's currently two weights in the mouse already, they're 4.5 grams each and you get four of them. And then you've just got your little sports mode uh, interchangeable palm rest that goes on the back of the mouse. So we'll show you how to change that later on. 
Uh, what else do we get? So you get this little booklet. It's always nice when you get little booklets like that. We have some stickers. I always love stickers. Um, it's really great that they've thrown them in. Um, it's good they've done that. And now we just have our little uh, 700M sort of quick start guide. The materials, what it's made out of, what each button does. You might not be able to see that because of the light. And then we have, uh, alright that's pretty cool. So if you're using the keyboard as well, they have a keyboard that um, is the similar sort of series as this. So that's a 700K. So if you're installing the software, uh, the one bit of software does both, so it interacts with them, and then it tells you how to sort of interact it with the keyboard. So that's kind of handy to have. And now we just have our two little weights, or sorry, four weights all up, two already in the mouse, just like that. And then just a closer look on the little uh, sports mode. So that's like a rubberized texture sort of top there. And then the sort of this one's actually already on the mouse, which is larger. This one, this is more of a sort of a shiny, sort of matte, um, glossy finish there, whereas this one's completely matte, which is rubberized. So I'll have a little bit closer look at the mouse now, and some of the sort of the main features that are, are involved with this mouse. So first off, you're pro probably thinking the design, um, a pretty weird looking design. Um, a lot of people I've heard feedback from are sort of 50-50 with this design. Uh, they think these sort of uh, two rails here are going to get in the way. Actually, these don't get, get in the way. If you actually stick your palm there, um, well, this is how I grip a mouse. You can actually see that the sort of those two rails don't really go anywhere near. It'd be pretty hard to get the, uh, those rails to hit your hand because it's actually sort of in line with the structural system. So that's one thing I, I just wanted to get out of the way with those. Um, so, all right, so first off with the mouse, the way I grip it is like that. So str straight away, my thumb sort of rests nicely on, on that button. And this button isn't a real soft button. This is your so-called aim button. And um, bear in mind, you can configure this button to anything you like. It doesn't have to be a sort of a sniper button. Um, if you're not sure what a sniper button is, it normally just lowers the DPI. You can set it to whatever you like. Uh, so say you have a standard DPI of 1000. When you scoped in, you can set this to 100 DPI. So you've, your mouse moves really slow and it gives you better aiming uh, capabilities. So yeah, so my thumb fits on there nicely. If you have a short thumb, a uh, long thumb, it do doesn't matter. It can click the button right on the tip and it can clip the button right on that edge. So I do like it how it's not just the center of a button, whereas some mice you have to uh, click a button perfectly in the middle. Um, and now moving up to the top two buttons, it's got forward and back. Uh, they're perfectly placed and I do like it how my thumb isn't sitting on those buttons. I like on some mice, my thumb is actually sort of sitting just under them and I can just go up and down like that which is also nice. Um, the texture of the thumb uh, sort of grip here, I'll see if we can get that. It's a really nice rubberized grip. I do like it how it's not, it's got sort of fine little round hole or dimples. It doesn't have like a hundred deep crevices that aren't going to sort of attract dust and dirt. I, I've been using this for about two weeks now. Um, it, got, uh, it got a few marks on it but I simply just wiped them off. I've had some mice in the future where I still can't get um, and dust and dirt out of uh, thumb grips. So it's really good they've done that. And same on the, uh, what's this, the right side as well, just where you, it might be hard to get that with the camera. Is it gonna, yeah, just there. So that's where my um, pinky fits just in there, which does fit in uh, really well for that. Um, so moving on to the DPI LEDs, we'll have a look at these once we fire it up. So you've got your DPI stages, level one, two, three, four. These are fully customizable in the software as well. Moving on to the left and right clips, pretty standard. Uh, they use Omron switches, which are probably the best at it at the moment. Um, a lot of mice are using them. Nice and large, you can pretty much click them from about halfway up, and they're just a sort of a shiny, sort of slight uh, metal texture on them. Um, now this button up here is the sniper button. Um, this is also an interesting button. I haven't had too many mice that have it up there. Um, I kind of feel it's good having it up here rather than on the side because I, I tend to be more accurate when I'm using buttons with my uh, with my finger, not my thumb, whereas my, my left finger, finger is always more responsive and accurate. So simply going like left to right or right to left is much easier than having to fiddle around with buttons down the near your thumb or even on the right side. Um, moving on to the scroll wheel, it actually does have quite a clicky scroll wheel when you're going forward. Um, it's not a huge concern. I actually do like a, a bit of noise when you're clicking forward. Um, 
Moving on to the front, it does have an LED that can pulsate, can say stay solid in there, and that's RGB. You can change that to any color you like. It does have this sort of a uh, sniper sort of canister at the front. That's just purely for sort of design aspects, and it also brings the mouse sort of cable out a bit. It doesn't have it stuck in the center of the mice. I kind of like that. And having it off to the left doesn't sort of bear any effect how the mouse feels or anything like that. Um, Moving on to the DPI switch there, that's just a standard DPI cycle. Um, it just goes up and then it starts again. So it goes up all the way through and starts again. And now we have the interesting bit on the back, which is the adjustable sort of palm rest. So you just simply turn this knob here. So I've got it at the max already. Now if you just go down, all the way down, it just puts the mouse at a really sort of low sort of a palm design on the back. Um, I personally don't really like it like that. I have quite a large hand. I much prefer it all the way up to the max. And I actually quite like how sturdy this is. It doesn't move. It, it doesn't feel like it's going to break or, or it's really flimsy. It just feels really nice and solid. And then to simply take this off, you just push down this button and then it just slides off. And it just has a little clip underneath there. And then to slide the other one on, you just use the rail system there, rock it on and then it just clips in like that. So this one is a quite a bit smaller. Um, I actually do like it, they gave you two sizes, which is good because everyone will have different size hands. Um, bear in mind that both of the, these don't light up. Um, it's not a huge issue. And then to take it off, it's just the same deal again. And now to get to the weights, I actually like it how they're on top. They aren't underneath, you don't have to unscrew anything, um, open up little uh, uh, cavities or anything. All you have to do is just simply pull this forward and lift it up. And now the weights just come out like that. So you've got two on that side, two on that side. So I've got two 4.5s in at the moment. And then to put it back in, you just simply line it up and just drop it back in like that. So I've got the mouse plugged into a uh, system now just to show you the different lighting effects you have. Uh, down the left side is your DPI indicator. So when you just click up, that's just simply all that does. I kind of like it when they have that feature because it's always handy to know where your DPI is uh, sitting at. Normally you can tell with the mouse, but if you have a few sort of DPI settings close together, it is good to have a, um, a sort of an onboard indicator. And then the last light is in the very center, like that there. So that just pulsates out. So in a dark room, you can actually sort of see a slight glow come out. So I've set it to green. You can actually have any color you like. You can actually just uh, choose from a color wheel. So you can have blue, purple, any color, and you can set this to either on, off, or set it to a breathing mode where it will just lightly pulsate. At the moment, I've got it to uh, solid, as you can see. So it's kind of nice they've added that as an effect as well. So that's pretty much all the lights they have on there. They haven't gone overboard with lights. I'm kind of glad they haven't done that. They haven't gone with any fancy scroll wheel lights. Uh, they haven't added any more around the bottom. It's kind of good they've done that just to keep it sort of a, uh, keep the looks aggressive without overpowering it with the uh, LED lights. So once you install the software, you get this little window here. So it's got the Cougar 700M gaming mouse. So I assume once you have the keyboard as well, you can see down the bottom you've got the little arrow keys. So I can only assume that once you get the keyboard, the software will be able to control both. You just scroll across. So I should be getting the keyboard soon to review. So I'll come back and have a look at that and see if that is correct. All right, so up the top you've got uh, game profile management. So you've got your three profiles here. These are just the stock ones. Uh, you can click on one, you can do edit, uh, you can load an image, which looks, uh, which is interesting because if you have different games, you can set an image for each one instead of the default Cougar logo. So that's pretty sweet, you can do that. Uh, you can import and you can also export. So you can keep a copy of these on a USB stick. I also like how you can go import. You'll also notice the profiles uh, set up in an INI file, so I can actually edit that. And if I have a look, if you're more of an advanced user, you can actually look at the config, so you've got like uh, mouse speed equals five, so you can really sort of customize these yourselves. Uh, you don't have to go through the so software every time, so it's kind of handy that it's just um, just sort of just like this in plain English that you can edit it yourself, uh, which is kind of handy. And you can just sort of cut and copy these and you can import a new one instead of starting from fresh. And then we've got sort of export, copy and reset. So it comes with three standard ones already. And in each profile, you've got a mode one, two, three. And 
let's have a look down below. So we've got performance mode. So performance mode is everything with your DPI, your polling rate, your angle snapping, uh, sensitivity, double click speed, and your sniper setting. So at the moment, we've got these set to 800 DPI, 16, 32, and 5600. And down below, you've got independent uh, X and Y axis adjustment, which is handy to have. Um, down below, we've got your sniper DPI setting. So this is uh, globally for when you assign the hotkey. So at the moment, I've got this to 450 uh, DPI. So if I sort of move the mouse around now, you can see how it sort of slows it down. So it's handy to have that. Moving up the top, you have your polling rate. I always keep it at 1000 hertz. Angle snapping, it's handy that the software has this. I did a quick test before, you can set this on or off. If you have a look at my, uh, my settings with it off, you can see angle snapping just pretty much detects when you, you're sort of going in a straight line, horizontally or vertically. So you can see with it off, my straight lines are kind of all over the place. Um, I'm sort of worse with my horizontal lines and with it on, it, it's, not, it's not a great deal better. Like if you're gonna be doing like Photoshop stuff, you'll definitely use a uh, use like a pen surface, but I guess it does add a slight sort of uh, performance increase for doing straight lines. So then that's with it on over here. All right, double click speed, that's pretty much standard. Um, your standard Windows control scroll speed, which is standard, and you can also change this to one screen at a time. And now we have your Windows pointer speed. So all of these will take um, uh, precedence over the window settings. So bear in mind, if you play around with this, um, it'll also change the Windows one. So I've had this on, on a laptop for now. If I settle this up, then uh, don't use the mouse and use my laptop uh, mouse pad built in. I actually find that the, it's been changed with that. So just, just bear in mind, but that shouldn't affect, uh, shouldn't affect most people. And then you've got enable mouse acceleration there. So moving on to key assignments here. So you've got plenty of key adjustments you can do, and they're sort of well displayed up here. So I'll just do one for now. So say I want to change the uh, change the uh, button here. This is the uh, me meant to be a shoot button. You just click on it you want. You go advanced. Uh, you choose one you want. So I could change this to, uh, let's have a look, uh, launch a program. So what you do is you drag it down. So it's all drag and drop. You drag it on launch a program you want. So Internet Explorer, probably not the best program you'd want to be launching, but you can do okay. And now that is now in Internet Explorer done. So the forward and back buttons come default forward and back. The sniper button comes default as nothing. I actually, uh, I've actually set that up. So to set the sniper button, you go there, you go to sniper, and then you just drag it down. And now that's been set to the sniper, um, which is set here. Um, so that's it there. And then your, your DPI, I also like it how it's got quite a lot of advanced options. So you've got a mode switch. So you can change the uh, this extra sort of shoot button to be a mode cycle if you want. So these will change through your different modes and that's actually on the fly. So, so that'll change the whole settings of the mouse, just not the, uh, the DPI. Uh, that'll include the colors, uh, everything you've got to sign. And it does that on the fly without having to sort of load and, uh, and sort of save. So the only loading and saving is once you set all this up and hit apply. So if I hit apply now, it takes about 10 to 15 seconds, seconds to fully save everything to the mouse. So that isn't too bad and you won't be doing this all the time. But if I was to then change through a mode, like, uh, like now, if I change the mode, see it just changes and that's instant. So the color of the mouse has changed to green and it's just instant. So I actually like it how it corresponds to, uh, to which one you're actually on in the software. So if I go scrolling through on the mouse, see it's actually instant. So that's really nice as well. And that's pretty much, pretty much it for the, uh, the macro keys sort of there. It's pretty basic. You, if you use this sort of a complex mouse before, you'll know sort of how to use this. And it's also got macros as well. I won't go into the macros, but they're just sort of a new group. Create a name. And then you can uh, see new macro. And we've got record function. So yeah, pretty much standard record function. It does all your keyboard and, uh, and mouse inputs there. So that's handy. And then the last one we have is your lighting function. So it's really good how it's got full RGB. I know some mice are just starting to bring out full RGB now. So it seems like Kudu sort of jumped ahead and they've got RGB out already. So you can have breathing fully lit or off. And then you've just got your uh, full color wheel here, anything you want. Um, I could make it bright pink like that and hit apply. All right, so once that's applied, you can actually see now that it's a, uh, 
kind of a, a reddish pinky color it's not going to come up too well on the uh, on the camera there but it is handy you can choose any color you want so if you've got a blue setup you can uh, do that so that's pretty much it with the software uh, really easy con to control really easy to understand which I like and it's got this profile so you can save everything onto the mouse and you can take this with you all your profiles will be there and you don't have to rely on the software Alrighty guys, so there you have it. That's the review on the Cougar 700M gaming mouse. Um, so overall, I was really pleased with this mouse. It's not easy for a relatively new company to come in to produce a high-end uh, product like this and keep it at such a low sort of uh, low price range. Now this is going to be out in Australia between the $80 to $90 mark. Um, and I think for what it has on it, the sensor, the weights, um, the adjustable parts, um, and the built-in software which works really well and especially the um, profile capabilities I think that is a really good price for under a hundred dollars So I want to thank Kuyu for sending this out We'll probably be doing the keyboard sometime in the next few weeks So we'll see how the software works in with that and thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time